Edmonton is off this week, so we don't have to ask him about that. I'm, I'm really glad that we don't have to ask Mick about that. I yeah. like what the Elks are doing. They're wearing new helmets at their next home game. <laughs> They're shaking Change things up. up. Yeah, yeah. They should wear, like, like change the colors, new helmet. Like, I'm down with this. I really am. Change they're wearing a uh, yeah. They're wearing like a native design helmet. It's very cool. It's like uh, these design. Like they're trying. I like I like this. Let's bring in some native good feelings and like they should have some shamans come over, Dave. I'm dead serious. If you're <laughs> wouldn't if you're the Elks, I'd fly someone in from like Nepal or something like that and like burn <laughs> incense all over the field. I'd be walking I, around the stadium. <laughs> you have to do something, Mick. Come up with something. Get, get something in Australia up, and bring it back. You got to change everything. Yeah, you see, they're, they got new helmets. They look pretty nice. They're wearing new helmets in the next game. Well, you got the helmet there. No, the dog Lincoln's there. lurking hey, What's around. up, Lincoln? Dogs, oh, dogs Lincoln. lurking around. Anyway. Hey, Lincoln. He uh, <laughs> talked talk spiritual last week, first time on his show, and the dogs in the AFL went like 8-1 and one or something crazy. So he knows, mate. But, yes, I was listening to the Elks Herd podcast, and they suggested they get some lady there with that sage and do it over the yeah, whole yeah, stadium, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And or this is a family show, and I know Dave probably knows the story, the uh, the Mark Grace slump buster. All right, Mick, so I personally, I'm playing, a, I'm playing the Stampeders plus the points tonight. I'm taking the game to go over the number, but here's a, a seven-point teaser. And now they're even up to 10 points. You're getting plus 17 with Calgary, man. Jeez. Plus 17 and over 46. I don't like... Yeah, Toronto were good. They're not like the... Uh, it's not Joe Montana, San Francisco 49ers here, all right? They shouldn't be 10-point favorites tonight. What's your pick, Mick? Oh, I can't believe I'm agreeing with you and Joe the Aussie because... I'm with you. I think the Argos got belted there last year, late in the season. Then they went on to win the Grey Cup. The Argos have been travelling. Sure, they're good. They're due for a letdown. I think they'll win just, but I agree with you. Take the Stamps on the plus. Stamps haven't won at home yet this season. That's unbelievable. So they're probably due. Jake Myers got to get a bit better, but they do have wide receivers that are pretty good and you know, they're well coached, so maybe the Argos are due for a loss, but I hope not. I hope they win. <laughs> they're a very good football team, and I probably I think I think they could go undefeated, to be honest. If they really wanted to, if they put the pedal to the metal, but they're gonna wrap up first place, so they won't have to. And they'll probably end up losing a game or two along the way. They have to go to Winnipeg later in the year. That's sort of the one. They don't play BC again. So they don't really have any legitimate serious threats if they show up. The thing that's so dangerous about the Toronto Argonauts right now, even if they don't play well, they still beat you. Right? That's the thing. Like they they've had they've had games where people have scored on them and or their offense hasn't been great, but the offense picks up the defense. So the defense picks up the offense. And oh yeah, by the way, they're now killing it on special teams. They're returning kicks for touchdowns now and stuff. They're a very complete, very, very, very good football team, but it's still hard to win by 11 points on the road. Historically, they have struggled, as you just mentioned, Mick. They've struggled in Calgary as well. If you have to ask me a final score, look, Calgary keep on playing in these wild games and losing them at the end. They're almost due to win one of these. I almost want to call the out the 31-30 Calgary. I almost want to say 31-30 Calgary, but... Let's say 34-31 Argos or something like that. Track meet, Argos win a close one in a high-scoring, entertaining, tr entertaining track meet. That's my pick. Um, what about Sunday Night Football, Mick? All right, Ottawa well, and the Rough Riders. What's your pick? You yeah, don't have a no, Where's I, your paper? Oh, yeah, where's of course your, where, I've got your, it here, mate. Oh, let's uh, go. Yeah, okay, let's, let's go. Come on. We didn't see it. We saw Lincoln. I, I, I listen to sports all day. You know that driving around. But let's be honest. There's three really good teams in the CFL. The BC Lions, the Bombers, and the Argos. And there's one terrible one, my Elks. And all the teams in between are so up and down. And with the USAFL and the XFL, we're lacking a few quarterbacks. We've got to admit that and some injuries. But that said, I think the Riders might win an ugly game over there in Regina, probably low scoring, so take the under and maybe the riders, but 
You know, their quarterback, Della Digo or something, he's backing up. They reckon he's got potential. Mason Fine's not that good. Injuries on their O-line. Red Blacks, well, that crumb guy's done all right. But you think at home with those crazy watermelon heads out there, the loud noise might get the riders over. And I like your owls, mate. I've, I've been dissing your owls, actually. But the Tiger Cats got so many injuries. they got no quarterbacks left. Flo Levi Jeans Mitchell's broken his leg. So I have to uh, say that your owls are better than I thought. Take the owls to beat the Tiger Cats. That's Dave's pick of the week. You see, Dave, everyone, we're all agreeing. Montreal's that play, I the pick there. What, Mick, what are we missing? Why is it the line like over three? Like I, this should be three and a half or four. I, I signed on and I looked at my CFL screen. I was like, wait, the, the Tiger Cats are not a very good football team. The, the couple <laughs> games that I've seen in the lines, my first number was minus four and it's only minus two and a half. So what's the path to losing the game? Like how do the Tiger Cats win? If Montreal gives it away, because they are good defensively. Well, if they Montreal don't make to, a lot of mistakes either. Right. If they decided to run the Butler the, from BC, they pay big money for Butler at running back and they don't run the ball enough. So they're crazy. And the trouble is with the Alouettes, their coach is a bit nutty. Jason Moss, he used to be here. Nice guy, but I don't trust him either. So the fact Tiger Cats are at home, they are some sort of a chance. Uh, Mick Aussie uh, with us. All right, uh, Mick. Women's World Cup. Australia don't play till uh, Sunday night. The Matildas are still alive uh, in this thing. And we've got AFL football uh, tonight. Let's get to the AFL and uh, see what you like uh, here tonight. Let's start off uh, with my West Coast Eagles. West Coast Eagles getting 54 and a half points against the Essendon Bombers tonight, Mick. What's, what's the play? What do you think? Well, I'm wearing my Burnaby Eagles jersey right now because your Eagles had their first win last week over the Kangaroos in something like 19 weeks. So they got their second win of the year. Bombers will win. Uh, the Eagles might cover. Bombers are struggling. They probably won't make the eight, but they got a great draw. But, mate, there's so many teams with four games left that can make the final eight. So some of these games, if the teams lose, they could be done. All right, so one of the games of the week this week, you got Adelaide and Gold Coast, Hawthorne and Collingwood. We'll get mixed best bets uh, on the other side. G-Long and Port Adelaide, Great Western Sydney, and the Sydney Swans, the soft-ass Sydney Swan surfer boys, uh, plus seven and a half. It's me and uh, Dave's uh, nemesis still. You know what's funny? I get over losses, Dave. That loss bothers me. That night, that whole game, like, it, I was legitimately mad, mad. I was like, oh, you son of a, like, I was mad that Nick night. Up. <laughs> All right, we got a lot of picks to get to, so let's get to Mick's uh, best bets here, AFL. So, Mick, talk to us about the AFL playoff picture. What are the most important key games uh, tonight for teams that they need to win? What teams are in a must-win situation tonight? Yeah, the Crows and the Suns. Whoever loses that is probably gone. The Crows are at home. They had a big win last week as a massive underdog against Port Adelaide Power in Adelaide. They're at home. And the Suns have lost their best player, Took Miller, because he did the squirrel grip, as we were just talking about. He's just suspended for one week for grabbing the other guy where he should The squirrel so grip. So the squirrel grip player. is he grabbed the other guy's nutsack. The old squirrel yeah. grip. Mm. That's what and you call it Australia. On. I like that. The squirrel grip. Ouch. I'm going to use that. But I'm you not going to do it. I'm just going to use the term. I like it a lot. If term. I was a wrestler, that'd be my that'd be my move, Dave. Yeah, imagine that. And the squirrel grip. Oh, no, he's got the squirrel grip. <laughs> I love it. This is, this is, I never heard of that before in my life. I love learning so new things. So what'd you say, too? Gabriel and I are going to be report. 53 years old in a week. And now we're still learning. That's that's one of my favorite yeah, things. Exactly. Sure. Things. Yeah, exactly. Things. Yeah, squirrel grip. I never didn't know that. Love it. But I remember too, Dave, we learned too, like you don't get kicked out of the game. Like we said, they write a report up on you. It's like they get the paper out. It's like, hey, you know. So so what happened? He did the squirrel grip. He played on the rest of the game. And then after they're like, hey, listen, you did a squirrel grip in the last game. You're suspended now. Yeah, the guy the guy he did it to that Dorco. They've been fighting they've been fighting for years off and on. And he did, he grabbed it and then held on for a bit a little bit longer. So the guy complained on radio, that's against guy's code. 
And then, like, Friday, <laughs> Thursday night, the AFL suspended him for a week. <laughs> It's a minimum two game suspension, is it not? I mean, like it's got to be. went on radio it's a and complained about games. it. Yeah, that's two games. Can't be one. You think, Dave, two Gray, yeah, the squirrel. Yeah, I think that deserves more than one too. Right? That's a two. That should be a little bit more. Mick, yeah. what are your best bets tonight, Mick? What do you got for us? All right, another really important game: the Cats and the Power. That's important. I think the Cats will get that done because no, oh, another big story. A guy was just. Got concussion and went back on for Port Adelaide. So that's big news these days. Giants over the Swans. Giants have won a lot in a row. Big buddy Franklin's retired for the Swans. I think the Giants will get that done and probably make the eight when many thought they'd go miss the eight. Blues and Saints, very important game. Take the Saints on the plus, but the Blues will probably win and the Demons will smash the Kangaroos down there in Hobart in Tasmania. All right, Mick Aussie. Good stuff, uh, Mick. So, uh, Edmonton Elks, when's the next home game? Next Thursday night, and they play the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But, mate, oh. they've got Jarius Jackson as the OC now, the former Denver Bronco and Notre Dame quarterback. He's an OC, and let's hope they start our boy Trey Ford, who we talked about last year. Yes. Because their O their O line sucks, so at least Trey Ford can run around a bit, but nah, tough matchup against the Bombers, eh? I'm going to go, but I don't think the girlfriend will come to you so upset. <laughs> Your girlfriend's well, had enough. Be... She doesn't want to go anymore. Oh, Double digits. Oh, she yeah, stormed she's out. Just... I had to talk of come back in. I said, no, nah, don't go. Come on. She was going to walk home. She was so upset, mate. <laughs> Serious. Mick, how would you feel Crowd about Sean crazy. Payton? How, how did you feel about Sean Payton lighting everybody up and, and torching, scorching the earth of all of Denver of last year? And... I, I, I was like, geez, Edmonton, it's, it's a rough enough season. You got to do the Broncos all over again, and your coach is going nuts telling everybody that everybody stunk last year. He sounded like you a little bit. You guys better be good. It was a bad week for broad Denver, Dave, not to mention Tim Patrick out for the year with a torn Achilles, and uh, K.J. Hamler has oh. to step aside because of a heart condition. Oh. Yeah. Nah, good on Peyton. Good on Sean Peyton. He needs to sort him out. I mean, yeah, Russell Wilson came in, thought he was great, didn't try hard enough. He was a bit overweight. And Gabe, your mate Hacker, golf hack, you were dead right. He was an absolute disgrace. Oh, because his mates with Aaron Rodgers. Everyone's sick of Aaron Rodgers and he's and he's rubbishy talk. So I hope they go bad, the New York Jets. But <laughs> Sean Payton can sort out Russell Wilson. That is the key. That is the key, and I hope he can because he's a good coach. I think the Denver Broncos are going to be a good football team or an improved football team, but they're in an extremely tough division. Oh, that's that's yeah. one of the problems uh, that they have. Yeah. Their win total is eight and a half, Dave. You think they get to nine? Got to go through the schedule again. I think they're improved, but, I mean, they have to be improved from last year, right? They have to score more points. The defense was very good last year. Does the defense drop off that Peyton's there now because they had a defensive-minded coach, you know, or just somebody to just do the defense and stay away from them? I don't think they make the playoffs. So can they win nine games? Yes, but they're not making the playoffs. There's, I don't think Denver's making the playoffs. Sorry, Mick, I just don't think they're making the playoffs. Uh, uh, uh. All right, Mick, before we get you out of your last question, USA women versus Sweden women tomorrow night, Saturday night, overnight hours, Women's World Cup. Are the U.S. going to get eliminated or do they survive? Well, I know most of our audience is USA, but I hope those beautiful Sweden girls win, the blondies. U.S. <laughs> girls can be a bit arrogant. But I've lost interest since Canada got knocked out, got disgraced by the Aussies for nothing. So... <laughs> Mm. I'm sure I hope the Aussies win now, but nah, Canada. I like that. Yeah, I like that mix of Australia, and he's disgusted that Canada got embarrassed by Australia. He doesn't watch it. Yeah, he's mad. You're a real Canadian, Mick. You're disgust. Yeah. That was embarrassing. The four nothing loss. It was bad. But um, look, Germany got eliminated. You know, five of the top twenty teams in the world are eliminated. Germany were ranked second in the world. They're eliminated. Canada were ranked seventh in the world. They're eliminated. Brazil were ranked like eighth. They're eliminated. Um, it was it was carnage. The top teams have been eliminated. That's why a lot of people think the U.S. are next. Actually, folks are cleaning up. 
the favorite doesn't win. Oh, this they are, Dave. Folks are cleaning up. Yeah, you're you're cleaning you should up. Be thankful you're not on the not room anymore. This woman's World Cup, bro. I lost the one hair that I had. I used to have one little hair, more hair. It's oh, gone now because um, yeah. of this tournament. That's all right. See Crazy you. stuff. Thanks, Mick. All right, the girlfriends in the Netherlands. I hope those Netherlands and the Orange win it, mate. I like them too. <laughs> Thanks, Ooh. Mick. Good stuff. All right. See you later. Have a good weekend, mate. They're a good team. See Watch you. out for the Thanks, squirrel Mick. grip. Squirrel grip's dangerous. Watch out. Yeah, yeah. Squirrel grip on the way out. It's a five-game ban, not a one-game ban. <laughs> it's like, listen, you're suspended it's, for five games. It's minimum two. It's a minimum <laughs> two. I mean, there's, there's true, no Dave, question. You're not setting a very, grip. like, it's not much of a detriment to one game, is it? Like, you know no. what I'm saying? Let's say your team is out of it late. You're like, you know what? Screw this guy. And you do the old squirrel right. grip. And it's like, I'm only going to get one mm -hmm. game anyways. <laughs> no. No. It's a squirrel grip. And what you're gripping is two. So you got to be a minimum two game suspension. There's no question about that. It's That's a dirty <laughs> move. Dude. Like, we've done dirty things on the ice. Um, you know, I just like that they don't kick you out at the time, Dave. That's what I find fascinating. Right, so you can like shove someone, you can grab them. Him, it's like like you get a report, and then you pay the price for it after. Right? Like, How do you keep playing? If somebody did that to me and kept playing, I would go try to destroy them. Like, what are we gonna? It's a funny the last eight minutes at a game. It's a fun sport. I'm, gonna... I'm telling you, like to bet, and it is fun to watch. Like it's not one of these. Like I'm not forcing it with Mick. Where let's just talk AFL and all right, whatever. Right. If right, you right. actually watch it, you're like, oh my god, <laughs> like, like the dudes are killing each other. It's very fast paced. The game moves along quickly. The crowd is really funny and entertaining and loud as hell. Wow. The announcers are great. Like it's just it's good. It's a fun sport. Like it's it's a it's a fun sport to watch. And it's on in the middle of the night all the time because of Australia time. 